In our restaurant, the first thing we do is light the fire. Seven o'clock in the morning, we come in, we're getting the wood out, we're setting up the fire. And we start it early because it takes that much time to build up the heat for the rest of the day's cooking. Food preparation, I know people hate it. I understand. <laughs> but it gives life to a meal. The more you spend time with the food, the better it tastes. A labor of love is work, you know, and we're talking about work, and when you're working with something, you're spending time with it. And that's where the love is. It's on the plate. That love is on the plate. And when someone eats it, that's what they taste. They taste, there's a story on the plate. The story of Horn O'Plenty Restaurant began in 2011 in Bedford. Mandisa Horn's story started seven generations ago, but she was most influenced by a more recent descendant. There was a time period where I lived with my grandparents, and my grandfather was the only black full-time teacher in Bedford County, uh, still to this day. And growing up with him, he has taught me so much. <laughs> and the way he saw the world was what projected on him. There's this element of separation in the area, or segregation, maybe you could use the word segregation. I think it's appropriate, because uh, it, was, it was real. And now that I'm older and I see what he went through and how he went through it, I realize that he taught me way more than I ever thought that I <laughs> was getting from him. But, but I, I realized that there is a long history there, but it's just too painful to talk about. In that sense, I've, I, I've, I've longed for, I feel like a transplant sometimes, even though I'm seventh generation in Bedford. And because of that, I wanted to understand people more and, and connect with them and have a, a better connection than I, than I did. As Mandisa began looking for a connection, she found one in an unexpected place, a vegetable stand. When her father-in-law fell ill, she and her husband decided to take care of his family farm. She planted a garden that grew into a roadside stand selling vegetables. I had a little honor system, a little honor box, and, and I let people come and just pay whatever, and I was getting notes inside the box, and people were like, oh, how much they loved it and appreciated it, and, and so I felt connected to them. I didn't even realize that I had a little, I was, there was like a tiny fan base that was, you know, alongside the road that, it, you know, it was totally uh, anonymous, but I still felt this connection and wholeness of sharing. And I was just like, God, I could do this forever, you know? So I just thought I'd continue doing this as a side job and it ended up becoming a full-time thing. I ended up turning it into a CSA to kind of get some funds going so I can make it bigger. And I had the first CSA in Bedford County. I had up to 50 members before I opened the restaurant. and. It was cool because people would come to the farm and I was making packages for people, you know? I was, I was planting, my, my mother-in-law, she would help and get in there and we would clean up everything and, and just package everything so beautiful and stick them in their little boxes and it was cool. And that's whenever real food conversations started happening for me and, and it, uh, light bulbs started kind of going off and just like, man, this is, this is sharing and this is fulfilling and this is really feels good. This little vegetable stand was Mandisa's first step to connecting to the food community. For her next step, she went overseas. When we went to Germany, it was like, I had an aha moment there. And it was, it was when we were hiking up the Saxton, Switzerland mountain and at the top, there was just like some lady with a table and she had this beautiful bread and like sausage. And it was just cold. <laughs> But it was so delicious. I had to chew it and it was tasty. It was my first introduction to sourdough bread. Then, when we were in Mexico, we stayed with some native Yaqui Indians. Yaqui don't eat uh, junk food. We eat the best meat. The best meat. The best meat in the world. That's true. 
that's where they had these mud ovens. And that's when I was just like, what is this? <laughs> and can I make sourdough in there? <laughs> And the coolest thing about that was standing there with all the women in the village. They all get together. They're all congregated. It's a connection that we all are involved in patting out these tortilla shells. I started embracing these other cultures. It really impressed on me connection with the food and the flavors and then, you know, the end result. Whenever I traveled, I realized that was what they were doing different, is that they were taking time to spend time with the food and not being in a rush. When I'm working with food, it centers me. It does, it makes me whole, and that's why I can relate to people with food, because I'm giving my whole self. But when you're working with the food and you're taking the time to do something, it's an investment, and that's what I'm talking about. These other cultures are investing into their food. Mandisa wanted to share what she learned with the people of Bedford. While in the planning stages of opening a sourdough bake shop, she learned that there was a historic building for sale only three miles from the farm. I always loved this building, and I also loved the contractor because he was a craftsman. Like, he, he, he did things the long, hard way. He would take things apart before, you know, a building apart and then reassemble it. When I realized that this place was for sale, I was like, huh. I was interested in the building itself because it's so beautiful, and then I was passing it. I was driving past. I just saw people dining. I saw people enjoying food, and I was like, in, in my head, it wasn't happening. <laughs> but I, I saw that, and I thought, you know, someone should do that. And then I was thinking, I just got this like feeling like I should do that. I should do that. So I kind of changed course right then and there. What's most unique about Horn of Plenty is we try to make everything fresh. And coming from a chef background, making everything fresh in today's society is very hard in the restaurant business. Um, so we try to source everything as local as possible, fresh as possible. We cook everything from scratch. Uh, we try to use the least amount of preservatives as possible. It's a philosophy of farm to table. And that's one of the most important things I think we do here is maintaining that integrity of trying to get the most nutrients and vitamins and goodness out of all of this beautiful food that we can create. We're known for our brick oven pizzas, our Moroccan pulled pork, which is just a blend of seasonings on a nice slow roasted pork. Our house smoked beef brisket is really popular. We've established many dishes over the years because we're seasonal, so there's lots of farmers are bringing us different things that we have to use up because we don't want it to go bad. When I opened the restaurant, I wanted connection with people. I wanted to feel a wholeness within the community. The only time I've ever felt whole was whenever I'm cooking for someone or I've traveled and I was with other people that were doing their living cooking traditions, sharing recipes and talking about food. So that's why I, I, I needed to feel whole and, and actually be able to, to, to talk about a common culture with other people. <laughs> and I decided that I could bring what I felt when I was with these other groups of people from all over the world cooking here to Bedford. I wanted Bedford to experience what I experienced because it changed me and I thought that it would help change Bedford. <laughs>